So today we are going to learn about organizational culture. So cul the learning objective of this topic is to, you should know at the end of the uh, lesson, you should know how to describe the common characteristic of organizational culture, compare the functional and dysfunctional effect of organizational culture on people and organization, identify the factors that sustain an organization's culture, Show how culture is transmitted to employees. Um, take a look at the, dis the similarities and differences in creating an ethical culture, positive culture, and spiritual culture. Okay, so the common characteristic of organizational culture. Um, let's take a look at the definition first. Okay, organizational culture, it, it refers to a system of shared meaning by members that distinguish the organization from other organizations. Right, just like our daily life, our um, uh, religion, uh, nationality, and so on, we tend to have our own culture that is practices by the similar group. Okay, similar practices. Um, it can be uh, carries the shared meaning, uh, a certain activity carried by a group of people that might be different than other people that might be different than other organization okay so culture is very important it's vital um especially in organization because an organization they will have they will have to do they need to develop their own unique culture um i can say that that we cannot find like two similar organizations that have the same, the exact um, culture. Okay. So um, some of the function of organization culture is to provide um, working environment and then some kind of like control where in this culture, manager can use it to influence the types of behavior, the types of value that they practice in the organization. So for example, if managers, they cultivate values that tell they are, subordinate, they are subordinate how to perform their role in creative way. So in that organization, they practice a creative way, innovation, uh, innovative. So all the employees will tend to follow the behavior because it is imposed by the organization culture and also the manager, right? And then uh, maybe let's say in another culture, uh, maybe the employees are a little bit maybe a very very conservative because the top management or the management has set up some kind of like boundaries or a very high power distance. So for employee, they can't be involved in decision making. So they, they are more like a traditional uh, company organization, very conservative and then um, not actively participating in a lack of employee engagement right all right so the primary characteristic that captured the essence of organization uh, we have few here adaptability detail oriented result outcome people customer orientation collaboration and uh, team orientation and integrity okay so for adaptability meaning that this reflect how the organization respond to changes in in environment uh, whether nowadays like we have a lot of technical advancement and then in terms of market shift as well any kind of challenge right an adaptable culture they, they encourage more flexibility give okay, flexibility and then they can change when necessary for detail orientation this aspect refers to the organization focus on the detail Okay, um, it's very commitment for quality, for example. Okay, let's say if if you are a company with a service company, okay, you're providing service. So you focus on the consistency of delivering uh, your service, the detail, and then um, focus on the att attention of the detail on each work. Lah. Um, let's say if if that is one of your brand identity, right? No, normally for luxury goods, for luxury goods, um, we can see that 
sometimes they publish a video showing that how detailed they do like each stitch, uh, stitching with hand, handmade and so on. Okay, so that is uh, a detail oriented. This one is just like an example of some what um, company, what, some of the culture, okay, the essence of organization culture, not the type, huh? just the essence, just um, the characteristic, okay, the characteristic. And then results and outcome orientation. So this street emphasize on focus achieving results, right? What organization do, uh, if they are with this characteristic, they, they prioritize in terms of achieving goal, maximizing profit, and then they value the tangible outcomes of effort. Okay, they more, uh, let's say if it's a manufacturing company, they emphasize the productivity, try to increase as much as um, product that they can and then get a lot of profit. If people and customer oriented, so this is more interaction between human, so it prioritize its people or customers. So you maybe um, from this explanation, Okay, from this essence or characteristic, maybe you can share in the chat box, okay, in the chat box, um, which one you think that your company, um, I mean, definitely all the company is, of course, it's a result oriented, of course, it's detail oriented, but which one you think that is more uh, unique at the point, more distinctive. And then uh, people and customer oriented, so this one they highlight on how important they are in in the in terms of the people, uh, employees, and also customer. So it involves a deep understanding about what their needs, concern, and then satisfaction. Okay, hold on, huh? oh. and then and then um, focus on also creating a a positive and a harmony working condition, right? And customers as well. So when you, uh, as a customer, when you go into uh, any store, couple again, so you can see that how their employee treats you. Um, one of the, I, I can't remember. Oh yeah, I think in Murni Discovery, good, okay, when I, go eat at Murni, Murni Discovery, at some point, if I'm not mistaken now, okay, at some point, I said to my friends that they must be very happy working here because we can see that they are working, um, smile all the time, and then treat their customer um, in, in a good manner, and then uh, they are interacting with each other without, you know, um, like a sad face or a tired face. So it looks like, I tak tahu lah. I mean, maybe only that branch ke ataupun something happened earlier that day that make them happy ke. I'm not sure lah. But that is one of the thing when uh, when as a customer, I can feel that, oh, okay. So this, um, it's a very good work culture that they have because they are smiling all the time and so on. And then collaboration and team orientation. So this reflects the organization emphasis on the teamwork, the cooperation between the employees, and then the synergy that they share. Okay, a culture that values this collaboration, they encourage um, good communication and then sharing knowledge. Of course, they involve a lot in um, involve a lot in making decision. Okay, employee engagement. Let me and then lastly is integrity. Okay, so integrity, uh, one of the one of the culture that we can see in terms of integrity. Definitely, uh, if they are the uh, uniform body, okay, uniform uh, pekerjaan badan uniform, and then um, badan penguat kuasa. So it should be the um, work culture, okay, work with a lot of integrity, work with a lot of honesty, transparency in their actions and also decision making process, right? It's all about doing what's right, even though that it's very challenging. Okay, so the answer, um, 
result orientation, detail orientation, team, team, patronus emphasize integrity. Huh? Okay, so patronus uh, emphasize integrity, people orientation, result, outcome, people orientation, teamwork, and integrity. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is the first um, model. Okay. Not this is. I'm not sure whether it's theory or not, but this is a model where we call it like a cultural framework group organization. Okay. So let's take a look at into the into the So this is a framework um, suggested by researchers on how to explain a, a distinctive characteristic of a culture. But it doesn't mean that it, this is the only four culture that they practice. This is just they try to divide it into several characteristic and then they try to go, um, you know, segregate into several quadrants. Lah. Okay, so as you can see here, all right, if you are... Uh, um, this scale at the point, this axis, this one um, referring to, if it's go here, this one focus more on, on internal focus and integration. Okay, so internal focus and integration, this one is more like in um, people-oriented, okay, people-oriented. And then uh, for this one is external focus and differentiation. Um, up here is flexibility and discretion, and down here is stability and control. So let's take a look at how it differs from each other. Okay, so let's say if your company is, um, how to identify if your company is practicing a clan culture. So this one, and if you feel like you have a strong sense of belonging, you have a lot of teamwork, and then <laughs> your um your boss has said that we your boss has said that we are uh family <laughs> okay so they practice like a family environment uh so um some of the activity that they might do here is uh, a lot of mentorship buddy system um a lot of um put to um participative decision making and then uh, it focuses more on employees, okay? So they can uh, send you a, a lot of for learning, okay, for learning and so on. Okay, and then uh, if adocracy culture, so adocracy culture because it focuses more on differentiation. So differentiation here meaning that it's entrepreneurial, it's innovative, it's... Um, Creativity, focus more on creativity, focus more on taking risks. And then also, um, also it's a little bit dynamic, okay? Um, so organization in this culture, they are a little bit more uh, flexible, okay? They are flexible, flexible in discretion. So they are more flexible. They are not really like structured. And then uh, they encourage innovation. In, uh, structured meaning, unstructured meaning that it's not an, a traditional one. Okay, normally if company um, uh, too structured like government, the government is too structured. They have their own um, like many, many layers. Okay, bureaucracy, right? Uh, but nowadays, a lot of company, they have changed their structure more flat. More flat to maksudnya ialah one manager handles a lot of people under them. Okay, more flat. And then the um, the span of control between um, the high <laughs> the higher power and then now uh, with the subordinates is low. Okay, uh, you can easily see your CEO, for example. You can easily see your managing director um, involved in part um, decision making as well. Here rather than if kalau meeting tu like everybody was there. 
that one is adocracy um, and also a lot of innovations. Lah. If it's a market culture, so market culture is also focused on the results, right? Uh, they focus more on the, uh, they are very competitive, okay, very competitive. What they want is um, focus more on brand positioning, increasing their market share, and they prioritize uh, profitability and also customer, uh, a little bit customer oriented. Okay, customer oriented. They try to find out what's there. They try to become the first mover, first mover in everything. Okay, because yeah, still um, focus in innovation, very competitive. Okay, and lastly is the hierarchy culture. So hierarchy culture, this is more stable. Okay, they have a clear control okay everybody knows their role it's not like uh, everybody knows their responsibility fully controlled it, ha it normally it practices a traditional uh, structure where they have a form formalized uh, structure very consistent uh, maybe involving like you have um you know Billy you okay when you are working sometimes you feel like why I do everything here? Contoh again. Why I do everything here? Um, I have to do this. I have to do that. So for hierarchy, they have a set of uh, responsibility that they know that oh, um, I will be doing the same thing every month. Uh, okay. Yes, it's more fun functional. Yeah. Um, it's easy to control because everybody knows their responsibility has a clear cut structure and so on. More formal. Okay, and then it is more stability, not risk taker. Okay, like adocracy, right? Adocracy is a risk taker, but for hierarchy, it's more stability. Uh, involve a lot of formal processes, formal procedures, and so on. Okay, so this is just um, a like a framework of culture to differentiate between this one. If you ask me, uh, my current employment, I think maybe we are a little bit here. Okay, a little bit here. Um, because university, right? University, we have to be innovative. <laughs> we have to emphasize on creativity, um, promote creativity to students. And then um, we have to respond very quickly to the change in environment, I think, like it. Um, maybe it can be a little bit, um, I, I don't think we are, uh, clan. I don't think that because, because it, we have a lot of flexibility and then we rarely see each other. So the working, and but, but when we met, yeah, okay, the, the environment is uh, very nurturing. Um, and then so far, people are helping each other. Uh, it's like a easy la, family. La, okay, family. Okay, so culture as a descriptive term, okay, um, this is different than job satisfaction, you know, job satisfaction is evaluative, means that you can evaluate. For culture, you cannot evaluate culture, you can describe it, all right, um, so it's like more like perceptions, whatever that we have discussed before this in terms of perceptions, in terms of the characteristic, in terms of how do uh, emotions, so the way that we feel about our organization is um that is the, the perceptions are all right uh the way that we felt when we are working it cannot be evaluated but it can be categorized okay it's a descriptive based on the based on what we feel we can describe it and then we can put it just like what we have learned just now okay put it like a few category and then we can identify them certain criteria or characteristic for it. Uh, job. And of course, if organizational culture, it does impact job satisfaction at um, any point, right? Um, if, if you are working, right, if you are working with a culture that suits you best, because not everybody, not everybody like a clan culture, okay? My, uh, not everybody like to be, uh, you know, to involve in, yeah, okay, clan community, for example, more, uh, maybe some people are 
individualism, right? Individualistic, and it's not wrong. Um, so maybe uh, they more in terms of like flexibility. So whatever culture that is appropriate to you, if you got a job um, with appropriate culture suitable for you, then it can increase your job satisfaction. But if it's not, and then maybe um, not just because it doesn't suit you, the culture is all wrong, okay? M meaning that there is no integrity, there is no flexibility, nothing. All right, it's just more focused on the, let's say that, more focused on the results, but the rest of characteristic, the rest of the elements, they tend to left it out. Um, kejam lah, macam cerita company Hitler lah, kan? Very kejam, uh, focus more on the results and the output, but it doesn't take care of any other elements in organizational behavior. Macam mana nak satisfied, right? Okay, even though that maybe you have um, um, you have a good uh, skill, people or, or everyone there, you have a good skill, uh, that, tak ada masalah bekerja, but it just that um, not, uh, the welfare ke ataupun tak ada work environment yang bagus, kan? So, it can be uh, affecting your job satisfaction. So, do organization have uniform cultures? Okay, so most organization, yes, they have a dominant culture and then numerous sets of subculture. And how to know? Okay, how to identify? Um, normally, the first thing is try to listen lah, to the top management when they do town hall, when they do like a um, annual meet up. Okay? Normally, they will say that, okay, we, this company, we put focus on this. We believe that in this. We do this. We blah 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 blah. So you can identify from that what kind of culture that they actually they wanted to bring. Um, but in some cases, that might be they tell you another, but they do another. Okay. So, uh, but it's a very good start if you want to know where your company is heading, ataupun what is your company um, expectation in terms of culture. Try to listen to the. Uh, top management because they are the one who set the culture okay um the culture is set from the top right it, it is initially eh, initially it uh, should be set from the top because they are the one who provides uh communication control and so on so they have to be they have to impose this culture they, they need to make sure that each and every worker in the organization follows the culture but um Along the way, okay, because of the um, apa tu employee berubah kan, employee turnover and so on, and then um, people left the company, so new people comes in. So maybe they have learned a different culture from previous organization, and then they try to bring it here, or they try to bring in in, a, in their new company. So when they, let's say if if they are they have a certain power we are going to learn this last, last next week so if they have a certain power for example like influence power at the reference power so they can influence other people to follow them so that's why uh, in organization sometimes we can see like the inconsistency um of culture the company expect it to be like this but the employee simply doesn't follow Okay. Uh, one of the practice that they can do is um, do you notice right when you when you start working they they will do like orientation ataupun induction program so that is one of the way to tell you about the organization culture um, together with uh, telling you the rules rules and regulation in, uh, in the company uh, they will tell you about who are the person in charge, the structure and so on. And it... Kuat sangat ke bunyi kucing air? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, and then... Uh, apa ni? Okay, so induction, induction orientation. That is a good moment atau good practice for them to tell about the culture and so on, right? Uh, the dominant culture express the core values a uh, majority of members share that give the organization a distinct personality so this is what i meant just now okay it can be more than this uh, it's just that they, this one they have a several distinct characteristic to divide them into several 
category. Subculture tend to develop in large organization to reflect common problems, situation, and experience that member face. Okay, so this is what I meant just now, subculture. People will create on culture and uh, it can be as small as a department. So they create their own culture. Okay, I have seen this, but, um, but when I was during my internship, lah. so I can see these subcultures really different uh, because I did my internship in hotel. So the culture of uh, FN, no, sorry, housekeeping. Okay, housekeeping department is so, so different than the, uh, than the others. Okay, we are more, we are more here, <laughs> very uh, formal, um, Cara cakap pun macam bar, memang keluar daripada buku kan. Very formal, very... Uh, if lagi-lagi kalau misalnya yang the one who entertain apa tu, uh, customer kan, very... Too formal lah senang cerita kan. And then we have a clear structure. Uh, you do your work, blah, blah, blah. But for housekeeping, um, because it's a subculture based on their work environment, right? So they have job rotation and so on. And then they have the... Um, so it looks like they are... They are actually a clan culture, okay, clan culture, more, uh, and the, the boss, okay, the boss, also the manager, housekeeping manager, they, uh, she practiced this clan culture. So when I was my, during my intern, I can see that, wow, yeah, so happy, why, we are, why we are so quiet, so formal, okay, why cannot we be like that? But again, that one is a subculture. Um... Okay, so strong versus weak culture. Uh, strong culture meaning that their core values are intensely held and widely shared. Okay, the, um, okay I just, I forgot to, I, I forgot to tell you, um, for your Coursera this week, it's not related to culture. It's something that we have learned before this. Okay, but it's okay. Um, just, if you haven't answered week five yet, so answer week five. Um, I think you have already answered the culture in Coursera. Maybe we, if I'm not mistaken, like week two or week three. Okay. So today, just listen to me um, lecturing. <laughs> okay, so strong culture. The more, the more members who accept the core value, the greater their commitment, and then it will become stronger. So actually... I keep on saying culture, culture, but what is actually the importance of it? Okay, what are the functions of the culture? So as you can see here is, it can be like a boundary defining role. So culture sets boundaries that it can be differentiate one organization from another. And then it also define what are the acceptable behavior, what are the acceptable val values and practices within that organization. So. If you work here, you have to follow our rules, our activity, our practices, right? Forgot, forget lah whatever that has been practiced before that. If you think that, uh, if you, let's say lah, it can be a conflict, right? When you join a company and then you suddenly realize that, hey, why this company still doing this old school? Everything manual, for example. The previous company that I have worked with, it's um, the other system, all right? And then we work very fast. And then in terms of the delegation of thoughts for uh, in this department, everybody do one thing. Not everybody do, need to do based on the availability. So that is what culture do, okay? In the company, they have... They define what is acceptable values, practices, what are the common shared practices that they have in the organization. So that is culture. When you join a company, the new company, um, you have to adapt. Okay, you have to adapt, and then it doesn't mean that you cannot change the culture. Of course, you can. All right, you can, uh, but you need to have like very high influence power by. Um, by having more people practicing the same thing, then it can create a different culture, right? And then it conveys a sense of identity, okay? Um, and I'm sure that if, uh, you know, if you are working in a famous, famous organization, a well-known organization, 
that have a distinctive identity. People know that, oh, if you are working in this company, you have this kind of identity or you carry the whole image, like, for example. Right? So it does, it, culture, it doesn't just change the image of the company, but also it will shape the individual's image, the role. People will see that, uh, oh, so it, it's either people look up to you or people just doesn't feel anything now, okay? So it can, uh, culture, it can improve, it can affect uh, the sense of identity and also in terms of the pride, right? In, in terms of um, if I ask here, okay, if I ask here, if you if you dare to answer, like, and how many of you feel proud working in your organization because you know that your organization is having a very good uh, culture, okay, high level of integrity and so on. Um, because at some point, if we are not satisfied working in that company, we won't feel uh, proud. We, we won't feel like we are a part of them, okay, especially if the top management, if let's say management doesn't involve em employee, doesn't even listen to employee. There is no bottoms up communication, all top down communication. So a little bit, we will feel frustrated, right? Because we have a lot of feedbacks. We have a lot of um, room for improvements for the management to, to listen to. We are the one who do the job. We are the one who, are, who is closer to the job. So it feels very frustrated if the management refuses to listen to our feedback. Okay. And then it can facilitate the generation of commitment. Okay. Strong culture, it fosters commitment among employees. If, and then uh, if they have a shared values, shared beliefs in organization, so they will likely to be committed to the goals. Next is enhance the stability of social system. So um, because culture is about sharing the same practices and so on. So it can establish a consistency behavior, uh, sorry, patterns of behavior. Okay, and also, you know, already the expectations. Um, so it will be easy in decision making, let's say in decision making or problem solving. So you know that, oh, this is the culture and normally we do like this, okay? And normally this person, this is the uh, reaction that I will get. This is the preference. If you want to do this, uh, the company's preference is this, this, this. You know your management preference. You know your employee's preference. And then uh, it can also impact in resolving conflict and so on, okay? Everything that relates to the social system. Lastly, it serves as a sense-making and control mechanism because it can control behavior right uh, this is all about behavior yeah, organizational behavior so it can um control the behavior you can set a guideline on certain behavior that is acceptable in your company it gets the decision making by providing a framework to understand what is appropriate what is inappropriate in your company so culture creates climate uh, organizational climate is shared perception about the organization and work environment. Okay, so it can foster the team spirit at organization level, can interact with one another to produce behavior, also can influence the habits that people adopt, right? Uh, if you have a good influence power and then if uh, if you are belong in what, I mean the climate, it can affect of, it can, af it can affect the behavior, let's say, okay, uh, let me think, example of our climate. Uh, let's say if, if the work climate over there is high productivity, okay, if high productivity. So whether the employee like it or not, um, they have to set a behavior to achieve target every day at the point in uh, uh uh, every month ke. So they need, the behavior is selagi kerja tak siap atau selagi tak sampai target tu so they, they won't stop for example lah, okay. Uh, because the they know that the organization will focus more on um, apa tu, uh, increase the uh, productivity and uh, something like that. Okay. 
So let's take a look at um, what we call as this one is ethical, okay, ethical culture, meaning that uh, referring to the concept of right and wrong behavior in the workplace. So ethical climate reflects the true values of organization. Ah, okay. So let's say if you have an ethical climate, means that you do everything right, right? You do everything right. Um, uh, kurang, apa? less, less misconduct. Okay, less misconduct. You know that everybody are uh, being respectful to each other. There is no sexual harassment. There is no discrimination. There is no um, there is no uh, bullying. Workplace bullying. There is less deviant behavior. Okay, so if ethical climate because everyone shared the same value. Ethical climate theory. Okay, and ethic ethical climate index. Uh, ECI categorize and measure the ethical dimension in organization culture. So let's take a look at the five climate category, instrumental, caring, independence, law and code, and also rules. So each explain the general mindset, expectation and value of the manager and employees relationship in the organ in their organization. So instrumental, okay, for example, instrumental climate, this climate emphasize on the Achieving outcomes and meeting goal. Okay, they focus more on decision making. Try to make it more effective, and then uh, at the but 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 um, sometimes at the expense of ethical consideration. If caring climate, this one is a contra with um, instrumental. Okay, caring climate it for uh, focus more on interpersonal relationship, meaning that people oriented. They focus more on the concern of the well-being of the of the employee, and then uh, when they make decision, it is focus on the fairness, focus on the employee's preferences, interests, and so on. Okay, independence climate. This one encourage power. Okay, uh, sorry, ind individuality, right? Individuality. Uh, they focus more on having uh, uh, having a uh, authority as well, okay? Because make decision based on their own judgment, make their own principle. It's not. Uh, it's more individualistic. It's not collectivism. If law and code climate, this one uh, focus on regulation. And then um, everything they will, uh, every decision, it will be guided by rules, strict rules, legal requirement. And then lastly is rules, okay? Uh, Sama lah macam tadi. Uh, focus more on the policy, uh, code of conduct protocols and so on okay so another thing uh, what cultural do is they provide okay uh, sustainability practices that can maintain over very long period so that you tapai nak kena tukar culture every uh, frequently right if you change culture Frequently, you will lose your identity. And then it's not easy for people. Uh, and then it will lead to organizational change, which we are going to learn after this. Some ch uh, some changes good are good until a certain extent. If you keep on changing, people will lose their way. People will lose their uh, sense, sense of identity. People will have to learn everything again. So maybe a lot of um, a lot of things that you have to do to make sure that your employee is well equipped with the new implementation. Buang masa juga dekat situ kan. A certain change is good, okay? Especially if involving uh, technology advancement, that one is very good, okay? We are now changing to the new system, more easy. We are now changing to this new um blah 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 um online classes compared before this only conventional so that one is good lah even though that um your employee might might need some time to adapt with the culture or adapt with the changes but actually it's good because it will be 
it will be practices for a long time. Imagine that it will be changed again. Okay, so uh, I have been working with a company that changed a lot in terms of their procedure, um, and it's not uh, from the employee's perspective. Uh, it's not really for us. We don't see the rational of keep on changing it. Okay, without a proper justification, without a proper rational, so it can lead to their disappointment, right? Disappointment and dissatisfaction because it will have so many process conflict that we have learned before this. Um, people will fight about doing an, uh, one task because one people will say that, no, this is a new uh, practices. We have to do this. Everyone is doing that. And then another said that, but we have been doing this for so long. It has been working before this. Um, and it is more effective, efficient, uh, things like that. Okay, too many changes. Uh, and another thing is culture promotes innovation. Okay, if let's say your company is like now, like like adequacy, um, focus more on the um, innovation, so it can create innovation like Google, Apple, right? So they are the company with a lot of um, innovation. They promote innovation. For employee, you can come up with your own product. You can come up with your own innovation, and we are going to reward you. If you uh, if you successfully deliver your product, okay, atau your product can be developed, uh, it's a first uh, first mover pioneer in the market. No one created it before, or you can create a system that is more e efficient. So they will reward, okay, based on the um, employees' effort, and then culture as an asset. Okay, culture as an asset um, can significantly contribute an organization bottlenecks in many ways. And it can be also as a liability. Okay, it can be a liability. Um, so, institution institutionalization. <laughs> so, it means that the short way, ataupun the easiest way to say it, you're right, it will be too rigid. It will be like, okay, this is the culture. We don't want to change anymore. So it will be difficult for you to implement new things. It will be difficult for you to implement changes, um, especially when the, when the market has evolved ke at a point. Um, your competitors have moved like five steps forward, but you are still left behind because your employees or the, uh, the, the, the environment are still not ready for it, resistant to change, still um, practicing the, the, the old fish and practices and so on. Okay, they cannot adapt with the new ideas. Um, in education, one, one way that we can see this uh, during COVID, uh, everybody, uh, some of the university, they have been doing ODL for so long, um, online classes and so on, right? But uh, during COVID, um, Baru other university realized that oh, we have to change. Okay, whether we like it or not, so we have to we have to move, or else that can kita punya um students they tak tak datang kelas whatsoever, right? So even though that two three steps behind, um. But itulah, uh, one thing about in education, in education, what COVID brings is every, every now everybody can learn <laughs> from wherever you are. Again, tak ada alasan that for you tak belajar macam before this, maybe you say that, oh, I have to go to the campus, uh, I have to, and and the campus that I want is so far away. Uh, I really like that university. Ataupun that university have the cost that is relevant for my my work. Uh, now everything is online. The only barrier is, what's the barrier? At that point, what's the what's stopping? Money, <laughs> okay, because it's so expensive, right? Um, I think I think for master degree, it's about twenty thousand. Your fee is it twenty thousand, or is it more? Yeah, twenty four. MIM is twenty four k. 24, my God. Uh, 
Oh my master, I dulu IPTA, IPTA slightly uh, cheaper. Uh, mine is only 12,000. And I only pay uh, 2,000 lah because the scholarship kan, yang apa scholarship apa, um, my brain feel scholarship tu. It can cover until 10k je. 17,000 lah. Oh, itulah. So now we have online okay but money is the another. Uh, predictor lah whether can afford to come belajar or not. All right, um, barriers to change um, and then barriers to diversity as well, okay, because let's say if a culture is uh, homogeneous, right, and then um, let's say, let's say if another people comes from uh, various parts of the world, so it might be, it seems like it's unwelcoming for them, right, and then it can create barrier in um in retaining this diverse workforce because like i've mentioned to you maybe people from another parts of the world ataupun another tak payah parts of the world lah uh, races religion maybe they have a different perceptions about uh, culture again and so on so when when we have a strong culture that maybe to focus on um on certain characteristics that might not be applicable for a diverse population. So it will be difficult to retain this diverse workforce. And then after that, um, after that, it will become if there is no diversity, so the company might have a challenge to see from different perspective, different view. It can also limit um, creativity, okay, because diversity can lead to um, in increment in uh, creativity and also problem solving. Ah, it, another thing is this one, okay. Uh, toxicity and dysfunctions. Okay, culture tak salah, tapi kita yang salah guna. <laughs> Alright, um, toxicity meaning that some organization culture has been, has become very toxic. Uh, for example, if, let's say, okay, this is just an example. If the company put a lot of pressure on competition, so it, it the, put competition internally and also externally, so it become, it become unhealthy, excessive competition, for example, okay? And then maybe, maybe because of the competition, because, um, because people are looking the way around it to complete, to get the target and so on. So what will happen? So maybe they will start to involve in unethical practices. So culture can also, if, if as a liability, okay, as a liability, if there are a lot of pressures, a lot of focus on competitive competitiveness and so on, it can lead to unethical practices. But yeah, ataupun you dah terbiasa, the company it has been like that since its beginning, since its establishment. Semua orang pun unethical, right? Semua orang pun you know, corrupted, corrupt, uh, practicing corruptions. Money can solve everything, for example. So it can create a culture that is very toxic. And, when, and let, when, let's say if your identity, your image as well, will be known as an ethical company. So yeah, right? It will be very hard for you to retain good, talented, Clean people, <laughs> okay, clean people because of your reputation issue. Hmm. Same thing happened in education, right? Same thing happened. We can, we can hear that people say that stay away from this university, stay away from that university. So, you know, it's, it's very, it's very sad for me because we are education sector. We should if anyone that should display um, ethical, okay, ataupun professionalism, it's start from us, like education. Tiba-tiba <laughs> jadi uh, luahan perasaan, kan? Okay, so barriers to acquisition and mergers. Uh, clashes in culture can also pose a challenge, for example, in creating uh, frictions among employees, right? And then it can because of uh, like especially for subcultures so with this subculture sometimes it can impact the collaboration within employees so very difficult to get people together and so on 
conflict among shareholders, stakeholders, same share, or main fund the issue without agreement drafted among the stakeholders impact the company's culture. Yes, okay. Many, many things. Many things can impact the culture. So how culture begins? Founder have vision what organization should be. This is what I meant just now. It should be from uh, the top. Okay, they are the one. Setting the tone of from the top. And then uh, founder hire employees who think and feel the way that they do. Right? Uh, and employees are indoctrinated and socialized into the founder's way of thinking. Encourage employees to identify them and internalize their belief, values, and assumptions. Okay. Uh, a socialization model. Okay, this one to create a and sustaining culture. Um, before that, let's take a look at let's take a look at the 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 elements elements of culture. I don't think. Okay, the elements of culture. I just write it here. Um, so we have the elements of culture. If I'm not mistaken, we have. If I'm not mistaken, we have seven. Seven. Wait. I think I saw it just now. Um. Okay. So how employees learn culture? Uh, this is a part, okay? Stories, ritual, symbol, uh, language. This is a part of elements of culture, okay? Elements of culture. The only thing that is missing here is uh, values. Okay, values is not there. And then uh, the rest, I think, should be okay. Actually, uh, characteristic of culture just now it, it, it is a little bit different okay all right so how actually employees learn culture how how the management okay how the management or how are the employee transmitted um culture to employee it is actually through story okay um if you have good stories <laughs> for us to read for us to know so feel free to write it down um in the chat box over there and then uh, in terms of oh another one okay i like this one in terms of the um another thing values uh heroes okay so let's say um throughout my explanation if you think that there is some um if your company is doing this and then uh let let us know if it if it's okay with you okay so let's take a look at the first one, which is values. Huh? Values first. Um, like we have mentioned just now, company, um, it's a value that that shared together, okay? The values that is practiced together in organization. So let's say if everybody have a good moral values, the company will become more um, harmony and then more positive, a positive work environment. And then uh, let's say if they are what we call um, in terms of <coughs> uh, individual, okay, individualism or collectivism. Okay, so these are the values at the the practices, right? If the company said that we have to foster a very um, teamwork, spirit, collaboration, so you know that you are a collectivism company. But let's say if you are focused more on innovation, individualistic, so individualism, okay, those kind of value. Uh, company, they must, uh, okay, for for Uniraza, you can find this any everywhere. Uniraza official. So you as a student as well, you need to know this, okay? Let me become the one who can put this GPS me okay so 
as a Razakian. As a Razakian. <laughs> Kejap, eh? Let me search for it first. Uh, okay, lah, maybe it's here. Yeah. Okay, so this is where you can find out what are the values that the company uh, hold dearly in onto. So here, as a Huni Raza, as a Razakians, you we should know all this. Huh? Our core values called as heroes. Uh, it's an initial ataupun an acronym for humble, empathetic, organized, resilient, enterprising, and sagacious. Right? I tak pernah dengar perkataan. I mean, I mean. It's rarely used, right? Sagacious in daily life, but it's very interesting. So, um, the first thing is humble, right? Um, we seek to continue to improve ourselves. So, by having this value, and then by, apparently, like you, you, you plant it in your employees' mind, in your employees' daily activity, and your students as well. So they know, okay, I need to be humble and then try to understand what others going through focus on the doing the right thing and then must be organized must be resilient uh, must be uh, uh, even though that we are uh, a academic institution but we also need to find opportunities we need to be um we need to have like entrepreneurial um characteristic in our job and then also sagacious by uh to be wise, okay, to be wise in our affair, avoid being reckless, and then strive to constantly to get knowledge and so on. So these are the values, okay, how one of the step, one of the way to, 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 to build, ataupun to pass the culture, right, to shape the behavior, so by having those values. Uh, if you can share with us as well, if you don't mind, if your company have a certain values, for example, like acronym just now, so just share with us. We can see that it has been practiced widely in other organizations as well. Kedua ialah stories. Okay, so stories, this has been passed around uh, as, a, you know, to, um, to shape behavior as well. It acts like, a, basically, basically, it's about facts lah. Okay, facts that happen in the uh, with the employee. So let's say the story is from the beginning of this establishment, our founder is like this, like that. So it makes us feel the sense of belonging. It make, make us feel like believe we are part of something. Let's say if the company state that, uh, say that um, it this company actually built from very small, and then because of this, 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 uh, this is a very uh, sentiment bring sentimental value sentimental story right so or when it uh, passed successfully employee will feel like they are actually a part of preserving this beautiful organization right that has been daripada sekecil kecil organization from the very small from the hard work okay from blood and tears for example so they think that I, I need to preserve this company. I need to take care of this because it's not easy for this company to get here. You know, inspiring stories, um, success stories and so on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I usually tell the story. Okay. You guys read it. Eh? I throw scan. And then in terms of rituals. So ritual is, uh, it can be ritual. It can be ceremonies. Right. Something that is practices um, widely in the organization. So this is actually um, can they can provide a uh, room for people to engage more, all right, and then uh, they can find. Uh, for example, uh, I just give you one example. If we have a lot of festive party, okay, at the festive ceremony, we celebrate each other. So does it make you happy? This one is just a small example, uh, okay, small gesture. Every race is being celebrated. Of course, it will make like we feel like appreciated. Um, Raya celebrate Chinese New Year celebrate, di Pavali pergi pakai sari, um, Christmas pakai topi Santa. Okay, so all this ritual makes people close to each other, and then from this culture, this is a part where it actually opens a forum, ataupun a a place for you to 
get to know people okay get to um tell your values your apa orang gitu macam what do you feel what do you feel that you like about this company what do you feel like what you are looking forward between the management and also the employee because during this nak kata informal activity bukan like informal during this um virt, apa tu uh, rituals and ceremony people are in the you know in the good mood right so this is the part where you should selit lah sikit sikit okay our company has been uh, practicing this, this 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 and that we appreciate if you can blah 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 especially, especially during the yi sang right chinese new year ha huh? you call you com uh what are you mean a lot of people together to do the yi sang right uh, so my said tula kan uh, it can it looks like very simple but actually it carries a lot of meaning kan um during the yi sang thing you say what you want right so people can hear right so yeah um macam tu lah contoh contoh okay i'm not saying that that is actually the actual practice that you should do that's just example lah from uh organization that has practiced it okay and you have been involved as well so you might notice some of the rituals some of the ceremonies that can increase this the uh, culture sharing next is symbol uh so for example like symbol um uh only the culture uh, i can I, sorry i can only think about mcdonald's <laughs> uh so McDonald's culture from from the symbol M right like M and then uh, they have the is it what do we call uh, that one I don't think it's a clown but yeah maybe like it's a clown um so we can we can see the culture of McDonald is and then their kids is happy meals so they are happy the culture is very vibrant even their colors as well red and yellow very vibrant very um it it serves as like happiness um it's just like apa orang panggil tu um happy lah happy that is one of the thing that i can think of in terms of uh symbols okay and then um we also have um uh, even 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 your uniform okay even your uniform as well uh even your lanyard as well it can serve as a symbol of the culture i am a person who likes to wear lanyard okay must i belajar dulu if i am in the campus i will definitely wear my lanyard i put up the point because i i think that i am proud being a part of the, the establishment that i'm with so i i memang suka pakai lanyard right tak kisahlah kat mana-mana pun uh until <laughs> until i join uni raza so um we have lanyards memang ada lanyard tapi it's not it's just it's not a culture here to wear lanyard okay this is according to my boss lah uh and he said that okay you just bring your card holder ataupun you can put it um just bring um ic because we can we can put the apa access card dalam ic kan so just bring it and then just touch because here people don't use lanyard so i was like oh okay so when i go to campus and i can see that oh yang pakai lanyard memang student lah so that, that's how people differentiate i think uh, kalau pakai lanyard tu students kalau tak pakai lanyard tu uh, academician ke apa tak tahu but i don't think that we we share the same lanyard tu um it's just yeah tak ada orang pakai lanyard kan it's a symbol lah symbol um, maybe maybe not a culture issue uh next is language okay in terms of language um of course our uh, culture the uh the common language practices nowadays it's all english oh speaking about language um uh i remember yesterday in terms of lang language yeah the, the cult uh talking about culture which like ipta some of the ipta is still using bahasa and then lots of ipts is using english as the communication apa the main language so my dad asked me um if one day let's say if you uh, if you dapat kerja kat ipta so how's you go, how you going to teach in bahasa because dah terbiasa kan um since i start teaching memang bahasa english saja kan 
So that is another culture yang I have to adapt if I go to IPTA, for example, in UKM ke ataupun in UUM uh, yang they use bahasa as the medium pengantara kan, bahasa pengantara. Uh, another another culture okay, in terms of language. Okay, uh, let's read some of the... Okay, yes, true. Okay, story can give spirit to the newcomers to do better. Exactly, I totally agree with that. Yes, by having a documented policy as well. Okay, setting like town hall meeting, and then we have internal WhatsApp group, social media. Social media is also very good, all right, for you to learn culture by having a good content. Kita panggil sebagai apa? Corporate advertising. You don't have to promote your product ke apa ke, you have to promote your image, you have to promote your culture. So from here, people will see that, oh, not just people, even internal as well, okay? When you involve them, um, involve them in this kind of content, so when other, and then make sure that this content, this documentation is avail, are available internally so they can see. By having a newsletter, by having a magazine internal where you raikan kejayaan employees, uh, when you publish the story, okay, doesn't matter whether it's, you have, you can separate the sections, right? This one is uh, work-related. If let's say one of your employee berjaya mendaki gunung Kinabalu, why not? Okay, tell other people so that you are celebrating their achievement outside the job. They will feel like the company is okay with their interest outside the job. They will feel, uh, and then akan rasa, you know, can they celebrate ataupun they, uh, they recognize. So why not having a, it can be if tak nak print, bazi duit, bazi kertas, it can be digital. Okay, it has been my job for how many years to come up with newsletter to my faculty before this. Hey. Okay, so why not do that so that people know for internal as well for external tak kisahlah kan you can send to your uh, stakeholders as well to see to increase their perceptions about internal culture that you possess hero story highlight the courage exactly okay um mm, understood uniform dash code adopted by employee can be symbolic okay sense of unity and professionalism Fafifu language, Fafifu, what is Fafifu? <laughs> F language ke? <laughs> um, as a person who worked from MNC to SME? Yes, okay, so especially if you have been working to, with two like really different kind of organization and from corporate, for example, from corporate to NGO ataupun from NGO to corporate ataupun from MNC to SME. Yeah, right. At a point, um, from from a different sector to a different sector. So it might be okay. Uh, so I think that's all for organizational culture. Um, that if we take a look at the implication for managers, okay. So why? Uh, lastly, lah, the implication for managers. Um, why is it important for you? So what I can say is, um. It can be um, in terms of, let's say, uh, one of the things that I can think of is the impact of culture on your strategy. So it can, if uh, if a company, if an organization, they have a very good culture, ataupun they have a specific purpose of any culture, so it can help employees to, as a guideline, and then help, help everyone to work with the same goal right they have the same goal and then they know um what are the aims what are the behavior that is acceptable and so on so and another thing is about your newcomers about retaining about recruiting employee right where um if you have a strong culture so it will be easy to uh, it, it can help but not easy like it can help this newcomer to learn about the acceptable and unacceptable behavior that you practice and then give identity lah. okay give identity the implication for that 
Okay, uh, you can shape the culture, uh, your work environment. Sometimes it shapes you, right? Um, maybe if your company has been uh, practicing integrity, so the way that you lead your life as well, it can be uh, with integrity. Okay, it shapes you. If you work in education, for example, in education sector where it promotes knowledge and so on, so you are. You, you feel like you value education, okay, the way that you see knowledge, education, you kind of like value them and then you try to gain them as much as you can, right, um, and the rest. Okay, so that's all for culture. Let's take five minutes break, okay, five minutes break, and then we are going to continue with another topic. Okay, uh, here culture, you can find it in modules, module five. Culture here, module five. Conflict last week we have covered. Uh, and then later we are going to cover change. Okay, take a break. Yeah.
All right. Um, let's continue. Okay, chapter eight. Um, organizational change and stress management. Okay, so this relates a lot with the culture that we have learned just now. Okay, a little bit about uh, change as well. And so the learning objective of this topic, okay, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to contrast the forces for change and plan change, uh, describe ways to overcome resistance to change, compare the four main approaches to managing organizational change, and also you should be able to demonstrate three ways of creating the culture for change. And identify the potential environment, organizational, and personal sources of stress. Oh, this one is stress management. Uh, sources of stress and the role of individual and cultural differences. Okay. Um, identify the physiological, psychological, and behavioral symptom of stress at work. Describe individual and organizational approach to managing stress. Allah continue. Okay. So, forces for change and plan change. For example, the force of chain, change. The nature... Boleh nampak ke? Okay, force. The first one is the nature of the workforce, right? Um, more, for example, okay, for example, more cultural diversity. Um, these are the forces that can lead to uh, changes, right? We have and uh, a lot of research says that now uh, you have to you have to employ diverse uh, people from diverse background, okay, cultural diversity, and then in terms of aging population, increase the migration and outsourcing. Yeah, this is, I think, one of the uh, source of change as well in terms of more outsourcing nowadays, right? And then in terms of technology, okay, faster, cheaper, and more and more mobile computers and handheld device, uh, emergence and growth of social networking sites. So we cannot avoid, okay, ataupun we cannot um, run from it. And deciphering all the human genetic code, for example. Nowadays, everything is in the system. You have to learn. Whether you like it or not, you have to learn how to use computer. Basic things, huh? basic things. Uh, every, every, everything is now system, so you have to learn. Even for this one, Eurox as well. I think it, uh, maybe this is not related to change, but... Um, I believe that we are all working adults. We have we have lived the education for quite some time. And before this, maybe we don't really have um, a, a learning management system that is so changi, right? It's very updated. And then now we have this Eurox. Um, maybe sometimes it will lead to confusion where to click and how and then how to use it. And then sometimes we feel like if I click here. Uh, if I just open this quiz, whether it will be uh, submitted automatically, ke, ataupun, uh, things like that. Okay, you. But whether we, did, but whether we like it or not, uh, we have to uh, adapt with these changes, with these technology changes. And then in terms of economic shocks, in terms of competition, social trend, and also world politics. Okay, for example, like the um, global recessions. <laughs> and then global competition competitors uh, increase government regulation on co uh, of commerce just now that i learned, uh, just now that i read pandemics. about after pandemics yeah okay pandemics uh, i've read some uh, about uh, e-commerce right e-commerce after this starting from 1st january uh, for small uh for to small amount from different country right you have to pay taxes now okay a certain taxes 
So, mm. changes lah tu kan. Before ni tak ada. Sekarang dah ada. <laughs> so, changes lah. Social trend. Um, more multitasking connectivity. Liber- liberalization attitudes towards LGBT employee. Environmental awareness. World politics. Rising health care and cost. Oh, so for those who are working, right, for those who are working, uh, what, what, uh, if you know, lah, okay, if you know, what is your work policy towards uh, LGBT? Because here, I, I'm not sure, for Unirasa, you know, I'm not sure, but in my previous organization, um, HR, they made a statement that um, they, I'm not going to allow, I mean that they, promote inclusivity lah means they are okay means that it doesn't people who practices like different sexual orientation should not be discriminated in the university it can be malaysian core rule okay all right next is let me make it small a bit Change involves making something. Change involves making something different. When change is intentional, okay, goal-oriented activity is a plan. A plan change. Okay, there are two goals of plan change. The first one is to improve the ability of organization to adapt with the current uh, environment. Where if let's say it has been changes in market market uh, environment ke, in terms of regulation in terms of technological advancement so the the one of the goal is to make sure that the company is moving in sync at the parallelly with the changes and then the second is to change employee behavior to become more adaptable to this new practices okay change agent are those who are responsible for managing change activity so it can be managers Sorry, it can be managers, top management, and also employee as well. Cepat ni dia cakap pasal, okay. <laughs> so, um, before we can talk about um, overcoming resistance to uh, change, right? Before we talk about that. So, let's still talk about the challenges. Okay, the challenges in um, uh, challenges challenges in of organization change first. Okay, so to simply put, right, or to easier um, to say, when we do changes, right, organization they have to consider all the forces that we have learned just now, and then um, that definitely it has some. Uh, it will be impact in terms of the practices, in terms of the strategy for planning, in terms of the future. Okay, so during, let, let's take example during the economic recession, right? During the economic recession, people, they will evaluate the decrease um, in the um, currency and then the capital market and then their implication of life, right? People will start to uh, maybe spend less, saving more so and then let's say for businesses okay for businesses this one if they want to uh, uh, get more customers so they need to plan a new strategy they need to plan a new strategy because of the recession impact the customer they have to plan a new strategy for getting more customer uh, that refuse okay to change at the point to spend more right and then um, another thing is this one lah. Okay, the one of the challenge is the resistance to change in the employees among the employees. Um, sometimes when they when we need changes in terms of let's say leadership style, leadership style, and then in terms of structure. Okay, we do we do right restructuring and so on. So um, let's say. There are some uh, robot kind of there, there, there will be like some restructuring or open reshuffle. Okay, um, this kind of change will 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 make employees to feel resist to hold a new 
responsibility ataupun to refuse to learn uh, on this new responsibility you learn um, refuse to learn about the department's role responsibility and so on okay so that is another uh resistant to change so all managements all right if, if you are a management you must educate your employee when you want to implement um a change right you have to oh, definitely you have to communicate right be transparent and then you have not only just communicate but you should be you should build the support and commitment in helping through the transition process the change process janganlah if you are a management then you change a lot of things but you don't provide guidelines okay of course people will resist to change because this is unfamiliar for them but you are expecting us a uh, faster similar output all right you have to have support for them provide guideline uh, proper instructions become <clears throat> the one that they can um, refer to right and then of course you have to implement changes fairly if changes that you implement is very huge okay like restructuring so maybe it will take a few times for things to get under control for things to get um, smooth okay operate uh, the operation will become more smooth so you have to implement changes fairly set a um rational deadline at the period okay. <clears throat> and then in terms of uh, participation uh, develop positive relationship okay by having good communication but again uh, this this is all i understand this is all theory okay when it comes to practical positive lah macam mana pun because we are dealing with different kind of people different kind of behavior emotions attitude some just like very kebal from positive relationship positive communication okay because they are like kisah lah, how how much you give to them how much simply people cannot see okay we have those kind of employees but again uh, this is just theory what should be uh, practices but we can when it comes to practical it's a different case right you have been working in your organization you have to identify what's the like <laughs> soft spot of your each and everyone employee okay, if you are a manager you know right your employee you should know uh you should know about your employees they are the way to talk to them okay individual what do you call it um kalau kalau us lecturers we should know each our student their individual learning style okay uh for for managers i think they should know about the characteristic lah okay the way that they how they perceive feedback how they like to uh up to how fast they learn what kind of responsibility that they like what kind of tasks that they can perform better so you as a manager uh, as a supervisor you should know better like each and every one of them okay each and every individual is different and then you need to know um how to that's why and then maybe sometimes it it seems like people will say that oh no it's not fair with you your boss um maybe ah uh, people will say that your your boss with you bagi you kerja senang when my time kerja susah ataupun why your boss talk so nicely to you but with me like really um strict and so on okay so maybe the boss can see the way that you learn maybe the boss can see that the way that you get feedback you know, kalau cakap lembut tak jalan ke apa kan we, we never know but as a manager you should know you should know how to um how to uh, develop this kind of relationship okay interpersonal it can it, it need to be customized lah okay personalized uh, relationship personalized communication between people because not everyone is the same and then um selecting people who can accept change by hoping that they can become a change agent right select first uh, tak nak berubah sudahlah nanti ai buang you taklah <laughs> no no i'm joking right so uh select people who can accept change focus on that right hoping that one day um because this this employee ataupun um yeah it can become a change agent it can influence the whole department ataupun influence another individual all right you focus on the selecting people who can accept change get feedback from them uh and then also for those who resist to change ask feedback why uh, and so on 
Lastly, you use your you use lah your authority power, okay, legitimate power, which is coercion. Um, if you don't change, um, apa, uh, we will take appropriate measures for this. You uh, you will you will face um, what do we call that? Uh, make, uh, disciplinary action or something like that. Okay, so you use your legitimate power too. Uh, make people adapt to the change. Change threatens the status quo, making it inherent political activity. So politics suggests the impetus for change is more likely come from outside change agent. And then employees new to the organization who have less invested in the status quo and managers slightly removed from the main power uh, structure. So this one is um apa orang panggil tu uh, sources again okay, sources of uh, change most likely come from new employee ataupun managers slightly removed from the main power structure so a little bit different um or maybe not not only manager slightly removed to the from the main power it can be as well from one department to another okay so it can be something like that as well Okay, so approach approach to managing organizational change. So we have a uh, Lewin three-step model, Cotter's eight-step plan for implementing change, action, research, and also organizational development. So I think this one is quite familiar uh, where the Lewin tree step model, uh, the unfreezing and then uh, the movement and refreezing. Okay, this is when uh, explaining about changes in organization. So for this model, under Lewin's model, uh, unfreezing, it means that the, uh, under this stage, okay, this stage unfreezing means that um, for management, right, under the, uh, this stage is actually involved in your organization, you should communicate uh, or you can, it's a process of changing behaviors, now, okay, unfreezing means that you try to uh, communicate to started to make changes in terms of behavior and then you tell your employees about the rational behind it okay we try to tell them why i didn't know why you need these changes and so on right and then the motivations behind it and then um in this stage as well you should get feedback from your employee and then um try to facilitate okay try to facilitate that what what you can do to make it more faster to make it more efficient to make it more easy uh, for us to adopt changes okay and then uh change okay this one uh movement movement is a part where you are doing the changing lah. okay so once the organization is unfrozen the change can be implemented so let's say if you don't do this if you don't do this properly that's why we have a lot of resistance to change over here. Adi, no, so, sorry, sorry. God. Okay, so under this, um, the, the change itself can be uh, implemented during the movement, right? Because you have tell them you need to change to try to reduce, try to reduce the reluctant to change, the resistant to change, right? And then after that here, very important, in the new movement, like I've mentioned just now, it's not just you change, you implement changes, but here is where you give a lot of guidelines, a lot of uh, procedure, process, explain it to them. You have to provide support 
not only communicate that you have to do this to do that implement change but you have to provide support you have to make sure that you are available for any challenge that they face you can't just okay for many injuries they can't think that okay so whatever it is you have to do this and then you expect that they learn in a one day learn everything by a one week and so on so it doesn't work like that okay you have to provide support you you have to um make yourself available if people have challenge if people have problem with the new implementation and then training as well keep okay, provide like training keep okay, provide training uh, it just happened okay in my my in my own organization so we have implemented a new performance evaluation so uh they provide training okay two days uh and then they also separate it uh, academics staff and so on okay so that they can provide clear support it what's your problem what's your concern do you understand that we are doing this new performance evaluation right so tell us how can we uh, make you understand and then if you have any questions uh, ada beberapa session so yeah you you can put okay you have you provide support you provide uh training and then also important resources okay resources tak kisah lah resources in terms of it can be like human capital kan if you need someone who let's say if you implement a new system so one of the resources that you need is the it people kalau tidak nanti people tak tahu kan who to refer to okay so you need to put it people there and then if let's say you change um to another uh apa tu, more more target this year so you can make make sure that other resources are available for example like financial resources and then um can be anything like okay? uh, knowledge machinery so all of those sources rephrasing okay under the stage rephrasing uh try to stabilize try to make it make it as a common practice right try to integrate it into your culture uh, it become a new practice it become a new uh, a common one okay until one day it will be unfreezing again to implement a new changes okay so according to cop copters uh all of them all of them are researchers huh? all of them are researchers so according to Cotter's eight-step plan for implementing changes, establish a sense of urgency by creating a compelling reason. Uh, basically, it's just the same, right? Okay, you have to put a compelling reason why change is needed, right? And then establish a sense of urgency. We must do this or else you focus on the what we call as this one. Um, tips, huh? <laughs> uh, kalau kita, if we want to tell the rational, Okay, if we want to tell the rational, if we want to tell goals and we want to tell the objective of doing something, reasons of doing something, always do this, action and inaction. Meaning that you tell them why you, why we need this, why the rational behind it, why you are required to do this, blah, 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 blah. And then not only that, you have to come up with the inaction, first, inaction too by saying that, if you don't do this, the consequences, blah, 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 something like that. Okay, if we fail to take a look at this, the consequences will blah, blah, blah. So you tell both lah, action and inaction. And then from a coalition with enough power to lead the change, all right, um, from a coalition with people who can, means that you can have a group of people at the point, a person in charge, and then to provide support to provide guideline, okay, create a new vision to direct the change and strategy to achieve the vision. How to deal with senior management who quite stubborn to change or more? Senior management, senior management yang tak, tak nak change. Eh? <coughs> okay, kejap, eh? uh, communicate the vision through the, throughout the organization. Okay, so uh, if we take a look at here, the difference, uh, the difference between this part is you for you form first okay you form a coalition first and then you get blah 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 okay this one is can be implemented during the movement uh and this one is unfreezing right 
but in Cotter's uh, plan is to communicate the vision throughout the organization once you have a good structure, a good uh, people that can help you. Okay, only communicate. And then after that, empower others to act on a vision by removing barriers. So you identify what are the barriers, the, ch the challenge to change, and then incurring risk taking and creative problem solving. Okay. Um, plan for create and reward. Okay, so here is if you successfully adapt it, then you will be rewarded something. All right. Short term wins that move the organization toward the um, vision. And then consolidate uh, improvement, reassess changes, and make necessary adjustment in the new program before it can be implemented for the long term. And then reinforce the changes by demonstrating the relationship between new behavior and organizational success. Okay, basically this you know, is um, um, a guideline for you. Okay, just a guideline for you theoretically to implement ataupun to manage organizational change. Okay, so... An approach to uh, one another thing that we can do to approach um, managing organization change is an action is using action research lah. Okay, so this one is a change process based on the systematic collection of data research. Okay, you do research. It can be diagnosis. It can be from the analysis. It can be from. Uh, it can be feedback action and oh, this one is that uh, action and evaluation. So this uh, action research. Because when we want to do research, we need to have an actual problem, right? So the, the benefit of having action research is it's a problem focus. Try to identify um, what kind uh, what kind of um, problem that you have that lead for you to have a uh, unique change. And then it try to reduce the resistance to change because of why? Because it is based on the collection of data and then um, it maybe have an empirical results from uh, different from other implementation that has been successful next is <coughs> organizational development okay organizational development a collection of change method that try to improve organization effectiveness and employee well-being right so this method, they, they value uh, on organizational growth, the collaborative, and the spirit, um, a lot more engagement, okay, commitment, employees engagement, com, uh, company uh, commitment, right? They focus on how individual make sense of their work environment. Okay? So as an employee as well, you should um, feel this, okay? You should focus on how you actually make sense on their, your work environment. Okay. All right. This six intervention for change agent are sensitivity training, feed, survey feedback, process consultation, team building, intergroup development, and appreciative. Uh, uh, hold on for a second. Yeah. Okay, uh, hold on. Six intervention for change agent, right? Let's see. Okay, sensitivity training. So sensitivity training, um, it can be a practice where uh, a method where you do like um, uh, some sort of like invent in intervention uh, to understand about um, to understand more about your employee, and then uh, you try by having 
if you are doing this method by having a good communication and then you try to understand the um, perspective as well okay the goal the aim of this sensitivity training is to improve um relationship okay interpersonal relationship to understand each and everyone better try to reduce the conflict and provide more um, good working environment and then you can also give um survey feedback so and from that you can get feedback you can get data you can get information about your employees attitude employees per uh, perceptions and then you can get uh, their opinions as well all the feedback okay what they think about the um about the changes and also maybe in terms of area of improvements that you can you can't see before this so they are the one who do the job right they will they are close to the challenge the obstacles so they can give you a, a feedback a room for improvement and so on based on the collected data process consultation so this one um you involve a consultant okay working with um it can be individual or it can be with group to try to find an uh, issue okay try to find uh what are the issues that related to the change it can be uh it can be in terms of uh, communication it can be in terms of uh, problem solving right team building uh having a activity okay it can be activity games workshop retreats anything uh to build up teamwork right uh let me know if you want to do team building in your company because i am a part of um team building company <laughs> right so if you want to do team building let me know um so, well, during team building, the objective is to try to improve uh, communication between uh, employees and then uh, try to create a culture where they can work together and then uh, more uh, try to increase team spirit and so on to get to know each other, okay, positive work relationship. And then intergroup development. So this one focus on the improving relationship between the different department, okay, intergroup, right? Intergroup development between the department, between divisions, between team in the organization. Um, the more to, to for them to collaborate more, uh, to reduce the conflict. If you remember that we have learned, right? We have intra group, uh, intra group conflict, right? Uh, so try to reduce that. <coughs> And then uh, try to understand better each and every one rules and responsibility. Appreciative inquiry, inquiry. Sorry, this one is a um, approach that focus on amplifying organization strength and positive aspect. Okay, rather than you focus more on the weakness at the point problem. Appreciative, focus more on the strength. And then um, you can focus when you do that. This method, uh, maybe when the employees see the strength the opportunities and then it can drive to changes and also innovation <coughs> okay um so when we talk about uh, a culture of change okay culture for change normally for organization uh it relates a lot with innovation okay so innovation are more specialized kind of change new idea applied uh, initiating for improving a product service or processes it can be ranged from small incremental improvement, such as network computers, to radical breakthroughs, such as electric leaf car, for example. Okay. Um, when we talk about changes, it... Um, okay. <laughs> so, source of innovation. Um, source of innovation, structural variable are more studied potential source of innovation right it can be uh based on the i forgotten for a while huh? organ innovation contingent rewards positive positively influence integration innovation and nurtured when there are slack resources and inter-unit communication is high in innovative uh, organization so based from the um structural variables 
Innovative organization, they tend to have similar culture where they encourage experiment, experimentation. They reward both success and failures and also they celebrate mistakes, right? They, they give you space to make mistakes and then you can learn from it and they trust that you can do uh, better after that. Lah. So they would reward both successes and failures like I've mentioned just now. For Google, if you can come up with a good uh, innovations and definitely they will reward you. Okay. All right. Another thing that is, um, that is famous nowadays is uh, this one, right? Learning organization. So learning organization means that the company, the uh, a, co a company is a learning organization where they encourage employees to always, always, always learning new things, right? Lifelong learning, right? Try to adapt with new skills, new knowledge. That's why we have training. And then uh, try to not just to develop the organization, but this one is for our, um, your own, okay, your personal development, employees development, uh, where you have a lot of skills, where you when you have a lot of um, knowledge, then you will contribute all the skill and knowledge to the your employment. There exists a shared vision that everyone agree on, uh, members of all things, organization process and so on. Lah. Okay, so this one is a creating characteristic of a learning organization. Okay, another thing that uh, relates with uh, organizational change is stress. How many of you by the raise of hands are stressed with your work? Okay, Ramai juga raise a hand, okay. Um, is it due to changes or is it due to different thing? Everybody, everybody is stressed, right? Okay. Um, what is the source of your stress? Good stress maybe, all. What do you think? What do you think? Um, your the source, the main source of stress, your stress. Management. Management. Uh, kalau be more specific, management tu maksudnya apa? Um, because okay. we have then we like, we have learned a few things in organization behavior, few um elements, terms, and so on. So kalau nak fokuskan management tu, what makes you feel more frustrated? Different level treatment, okay. So, try. I think, uh -huh. I think because um, restructuring, they make everybody anxious. Oh, restructuring. So, so, change so in terms of the management, they are unsure what is going to be next. I think this is the main resources because it's made everybody stressful. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily bad, but it's just a human nature, it's emotion where you uncertainly, you make me nervous, you know, like insecure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, leadership style, change of management, different level treatment. Different level treatment, is it like bias? Is it like discrimination? Management, um, how management? Uncertainty management decision. Uncertainty management decision. Oh, okay. Micromanagement, Miss. Micromanagement. Yeah, you hire us because we know what <laughs> we are doing, but you still want to do our work. Mm. Lack of trust, lah. Lack of trust, exactly. Okay. Um, there is a very small room for you to become uh, autonomy about your work, right? Uh, workload and shortage of staff. Oh, so this one is workload. Um organizing like this one is organizing problem conflict between departments okay this one is in in the in the conflict they always try upper management okay so they refuse to receive feedback uh refuse to listen different leader have different style of leadership hell is other people <laughs> workload and time arrangement healthy stress as we grow and overcome okay workload no mercy, no win-win situations, okay, so um, office politics, okay, yeah, all right. So most of, uh, <coughs> um, 
what what you have what we have learned okay what we have learned just now uh, politics lah uh, eh, sorry um conflict and then um similar things okay similar things as well um when when we go for training when when we go for training especially sometimes can we wonder kadang-kadang kita pergi training yang um apa tu macam i hari tu i kena pergi training lama dah lah benda ni okay it has been so long uh leadership leadership training <coughs> ke apa eh uh, uh, leadership training lah if I'm not mistaken yes so yang dia hantarnya ialah um, semua peke- uh, lecturers, admin staff and so on okay by hoping lah okay I think the management was hoping that we can build uh, our ataupun we can develop our uh, train apa tu our leadership skill but the funny thing is, when we go to their training, um, you know, like all the admin staff can uh, normally they will just join kerja baru baru join kerja, and then they ask like a very genuine question. They ask to the trainer, but how can we do this if our our manager ataupun our top management is not even doing this? <laughs> okay, so I remember yang trainer tu memang gelak. Okay, dia cakap, sepatutnya dia orang lah yang datang training ni kan. Dia cakap, haa itulah kenapa kita orang yang kena datang training ni. Okay, because of the learning, uh, leadership style kan. So, it's very honest. Um, kenapa kita kena buat dia orang kat management tu tak buat. Alright, <laughs> it's not easy. Okay, it's not easy to be both parties. Management part and also an employee part. Okay, mesti ada dissatisfaction. Employees part, sometimes they are, their hands are tied because of the target because of the um apa orang panggil tu the the planning the strategic planning that they have implemented before so hands are tight and some of them are memang bounded by rules bounded by try to max minimizing uh cost ke apa lah tak tahulah kan ya dia orang punya uh, management punya decision and employees will all feel frustrated because um because there are a lot of challenges, there are a lot of feedbacks but are not being heard. And so at some point we stop doing, we stop talking, okay, we stop giving feedback and then, um, yeah, so there is no open communication over there. Right? We, we don't do good communication. Ah, cheap skip from the management. I said earlier, okay, so management, they have, um, they have li- tried to reduce costs uh, base, I mean, it is all related kan dalam business kan? Uh, for a company, it's more efficient if they can reduce cost. So, nak buat macam mana kan? This is what they, they, they have learned in, <laughs> uh, this is what they have learned from the theory part, okay? Minimize cost, but they, actually it's not minimize cost, it's about allocating resources, okay? Efficiently allocating resources. Malaysian company generally have poor change management. Yes, it's a practice that should be improved. Okay, agree. <coughs> Stress happens when you go out of your comfort zone stepping up. Um, yeah, okay, again, dealing with changes, dealing with something that is unfamiliar, uh, uncertainty as well. It's good for organization changes. True, true, okay. Um, if it's convey, if it's relevant, if it's uh, rational and if it's for organization's benefit, definitely change is good. Not every, not changes are bad all the time. Okay, um, it can in, if it's, it can increase the if it, uh, the productivity. It can increase the uh, more things can get faster done. Then it's good. Lah. Okay, so let's take a look at stress. I just keep to <laughs> work is top source of stress okay the area of financial worries 64% work 60% family responsibility 47% and health concern is 46% based on the stress in america paying with our health uh, in 2015 so work and also financial worries lah, can cause more stress but the funny thing is we are going to work uh, to get better on our finance, to gain to gain money, but both things are actually were stress stressing us more. <clears throat> so, when they ask about how stressed are you at work, what is your stress level? So you can, as you can see in the pie chart here, the red color is extreme. Okay, with accompanying symptoms, uh, 
um so it it affected your well-being right your mental health and so on and manageable is 31 <coughs> percent low is very low okay only five percent <coughs> so stress at work model of stress from so the potential source of stress it can be from the environmental factors where economic uncertainty, political uncertainty, or technological change. And then it can be from the organizational factor. This is regarding, this is what you have said before this. Lah. Your task demand. <coughs> task demand maksudnya workload. Okay, one of it. One of it is workload. Role demands. Okay, so your expected is to do more than uh, like a superhuman, like a superhero to do everything uh, dengan cepat, dengan tepat. Then dengan cost yang rendah, then dengan yang everything, okay? And then interpersonal demands, okay? The, the recognition that we want, the feelings to be, uh, to have a good uh, environment. And then we have personal factors, for example, like economic problems and family problems, okay? So the consequences of this, <coughs> um, Individual differences, okay, these are actually affected also by individual differences based on the perceptions that we have, right? And then job experience that we have maybe before this. Let's say if we have been working with a company that has been so stressful, so come now to the company like this, still stressful, but you learn better to adapt it. Okay, in terms of social support, maybe some people, you can see that very stressful work life, very stressful dekat tempat kerja kan nampak macam dia ada 10 tangan it can be very stressful and then but you can see that him or her can manage it maybe because got social support outside but some people maybe you can see that uh kerja stress lah okay can stress but when you look at him or her it feels like they are handling world problem okay maybe because they don't have enough social support outside Maybe they they put all the burden in their shoulder alone and then accumulated all that can become very uh, stressful for them and then burn out lah, little burn out. And then personality traits. Okay, some people, it's true, you know, some people, they have this trait that is malas fikir. Stress pun lah, tak apalah buat kerja, memang stress pun, malas lah, fikir sangat. <laughs> kan? Dia... Dia memang ada like satu shield yang malas fikir everything pun. It's like whatever happens in the world does not affect them at all because they, hmm, biarlah, malas fikir. Okay. And some people, even though that a single word, a single sentence can really, uh, can really, um, bukan trigger lah, but um, it means a lot for them, right? Just because of our traits, our personality is different. So, what I try to say here is be kind. Okay, be kind to people. Don't compare. Don't compare that. Aku ni lagi teru. Okay, I'll stop saying that, right? I mean, because everybody is not the same, you know. You might have a good social support, but others know, right? And then um, the traits. Maybe you are very immune to anything, or maybe people treat you differently, okay? So... Be empathetic when when people are having their stress. But relevant, ah, kalau let's say, I pun marah juga, okay? I, I pun ada rasa juga. Let's say if sometimes dia yang cari masalah sendiri ataupun kita dah bagi advice, dia tak nak ikut. Nah, itu pun, itu pun satu jenis stress. Tambah lagi stress kita, kan? Okay, so it, it depends on you. I believe that we are all um, know how to think better, how know how, how to know how to differentiate things that can the things that we can consume, the thing that we cannot consume. But let's say if a person you know that they are stressed, but, but you have been a very good social support to them, it's just that they are the one who bring all the problems. Uh, so that one is, it's either if you can't say anything good, then don't say anything at all, right? Uh, this is the part where you should be immune as well to the problems, to the runs. Yes? Okay, you listen, that's all. Right, because, uh, or if you have an ability to become um, advisor, ataupun uh, some some people they are very soft spoken, you know, people will listen to them, listen to them when they give advice. 
and uh, yeah, give people have soft spot for them. So if you think that you have those abilities, then go ahead. Okay, try to help your friends, try to help your colleague, your family members. Okay, um, I think for me, I can I can listen. Okay, if I if I'm <laughs> not not really good at giving um, advice because I afraid that. Um, I afraid that I give advice that people already know that, right? Uh, I cannot give more creative advice. So, yeah. <laughs> and then in terms of consequences, if a physiological symptoms, so take a look at these symptoms as well, right? Um, in this class, let's let's uh, try to bring each other up, <laughs> try to become a social support for each other. These are all your classmates, right? Um, so take a look at the symptoms. If you have like a chronic health condition, if you think that you your body is not responding to you as it before, you feel like unhealthy, so seek help. And then uh, psychological symptoms. So this one refers to having a lot of anxiety, nervous. Um, in terms of emotional well being, you can you have lower emotional well being where maybe you feel that you can you can uh, cry easily at random times or slightly things happen to you and then you can't cope with it um, emotionally uh, in, uh, in, in, a, in a good emotion. So again, seek help. You go for go to doctors and then um, try try to do something about it. Okay, try to do something about it. Um, I know that, that now nowadays it's very tough to get <clears throat> employment, okay? and we cannot control what others do to us, but we can control what we consume, what we do to ourselves. So try to add more positivity and try to take care of yourself. Uh, to be honest, actually this happened as well in my family. Okay, my mom is very workaholic, very very workaholic. So. Um, I think for me is it's not her that is worrying about her health. It's me, right? And and when she retired this year, wow, I feel so relieved. You know, one of my source of stress is actually not from. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, I mute you for a while. It's from my mom's work, okay? Because she is actually very workaholic, and then her workload is very banyak sangat. So she doesn't take care of her health, you know. I just, to be honest, like, memang I tak tenang selagi tak dapat dia punya text, dia nak balik rumah tu kan. So now that she is retired, it really, <laughs> my stress level go down very much, you know, <laughs> based because of other people. My my anxiety, kan, my, apa tu, bukan anxiety, my anxious feeling about her well, well-being. Selagi dia kat office tu, because I afraid she never, she don't, Apa tu, she doesn't take lunch because that's sempai. So I always, I mean, when, and then when, when she go back, dekat rumah, uh, tell us about the problem, blah, blah, blah. And then when we give advice, make sure that you are healthy or else uh, the company will replace you in a blink. So it, it's not, it's not worth it to neglect your own health. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give you same advice now, right? You can work as much as you want. Right, it's up to you, but make it balanced, lah. Okay, fit your uh, health as well, right? If you want to give uh, two hundred percent to your work, then go ahead. No one is stopping you, but make sure that you give two hundred percent to your yourself as well. Okay, behavioral symptom, for example, like in terms of job performance, you identify that oh, uh, I can do much better before this, right? In terms of job performance. And then higher absenteeism, and then higher turnover as well. Fewer organization they have uh, house resource. Oh, okay, uh, to ease the workplace stress level. Maybe we need to introduce a law to make it compulsory, right? Okay, yes, to manage stress, to make sure to the mental health. Oh, nowadays we have a lot of mental health issue, right? And then. Um, I think world nowadays is very a scary place to live in. Um, sometimes I, I love when people say that, okay, um, this is the time where we should move to Pluto already. 
<laughs> now it's very uh, scary time because um, people, if we are not in a good, in a stable mental health or mental well-being, we tend to do things, you know, um, like a lot of suicides happen. Okay, it's very sad to think about all this. Now, uh, okay, um, next is, what time is it now? And Managing stress. Um, okay, so to manage, manage stress, I think we have discussed this now. Uh, and, and please, if you have a very good technique to reduce stress, maybe you can share with your friends, right? You can share with your friends as well. How do you manage your stress so that we can learn from each other? For me, um, am I stressed? <laughs> My source of stress went, go, went, away, went away already. Um, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I do have stress, okay? I do have um, like one stressful source of stress so what i do is uh, <laughs> what i do is my stress is what i do is i study that's all okay so mine is i just i just study and then i just i just be um try to say it positively huh yeah okay so for me i just try to to say it positively in a long term um and then um, I did read one one of the motivation things. They say that don't focus on what if I fail or what what about what if I cannot do this? What about if this this this? And then turn it into a positive saying. What if I su uh, successfully blah blah blah? What if I manage to do this? You focus on the positive one. So that is my um, my technique at at currently lah. Okay, currently. Uh, before this, if I stress, I tanam poko, okay, so that, uh, you know, get outdoor, not really outdoor, but I mean, get get yourself a plant and then treat it like your baby. <laughs> okay, so, your doesn't go work when no stress. Yeah, fit stray cats and then go see therapist, healing, how healing? Go back to the creator, get closer, remember back our goal, okay? Yes, go back to your family, okay? get your social support. Exercise, hiking, true, okay? Exercise, uh, it relates a hormone that relates to happiness, right? So, uh, do exercise can, can increase the happiness level. So, maybe it can help you. By doing that, um, can reduce the stress level, okay? But... Engage activity, zikir, solat, right? Okay, so learn from each other. Let's learn from each other. All right, so that is a personal way to managing stress. So how, let's say, if a formal way ataupun more organizational way to manage stress at work. So the first one is to get, um, to learn more, okay, to learn more try to get a uh, training, okay? Better selection and placement. This one may be quite difficult for us because um, it's very challenging now, right? It, economic is very challenging. So um, it depends, like, it, dep it depends if you are a risk taker, then maybe you can look for a different employment, but with this kind of environment, maybe it's quite difficult, right? Uh, goal setting. So go back, um, list out your, identify your goal and then try to work there, try to make a positive mind to achieve your goal. Okay, re redesigning jobs. Maybe the way that you do job before this, it doesn't work, right? Maybe you need a different technique, a different way. So one of the way that you can learn from others, okay, try to um, seek for people, ask them how they do their work, how do they... Um, um, deal with the the challenge, the obstacle in your work, the challenges of doing your work. Okay, and then employee involvement um, for organization. Uh, if you have, or maybe you can start, okay, if you still don't have um, the club 
club uh, employee club well-being okay employee well-being club so maybe you can start one simple okay you ask them okay this saturday let's go jogging every month once a month employee well-being club so try to get involved and then involved in maybe small small csr or you do activity like fun fun activity okay every two weeks or you have a challenge or you have a fitness challenge throughout the year i joined the fitness challenge throughout the year instead of getting money i'm paying money to my organization because naik berat badan not helping at all at the program okay and then the one who wins is actually very skinny already she's okay but it was fine it was fun for the whole year <laughs> it was the um yeah the one the one who wins is she's thin already you know all the fat fat like me we we are not even if we are not able to reduce our weight we pay more all right because if you gain weight right you have to pay so i i even pay in advance because yeah in terms of goal setting down the drain okay really fail already and then organizational com communication um maybe in terms of sabbatical leave okay um but again huh, in this in this it's it's not easy to do it to get uh unpaid leave ke apa ke. it's not easy in this kind of um environment because we never know now again COVID is rising again and very scary okay yeah wellness program so this is what we have what we had previously uh, it's fun effective i'm not sure <laughs> for me it's not effective but it was fun it happy to help others right happy to be involved in uh, a lot of activity okay uh, so i think that's all uh, for today all right um i will publish your marks after this and also your attendance make sure you complete uh, week five okay but week five it's not relevant to culture and change all right uh, i didn't i didn't take a look at the coursera structure after week three um so if, since week three if i knew then i could skip the uh, previous chapters all right so that's all uh, thank you for those who give us who gives the tips to manage stress all right uh, and i hope as well i hope that you guys uh, are healthy try to reduce stress okay um, like i've mentioned to you your organization will replace you soon if you are not good for them or you are you are not beneficial for them right so but this is this is not a message saying that you should lower down your job performance no this is me saying that you should balance it whatever that you give your organization make sure that you give it back to yourself too right you give more time to your organization then you have to in your masa cuti so make sure that you give to yourself pula okay if you spend more time to, for your uh, in meeting and then you feel stressed and then maybe you can take advice from our friends then take time to go back to our creator to heal okay to ask more from him as well okay a very good advice here right very good advice is here um go out nature friends and family and then makan baca novel uh yoga okay yoga i remember once the well, my company they they call yoga instructor instead of it 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 became a very meditation atau medi apa orang panggil tu um mindful <laughs> mindful events it became like a laughing because we are not that flexible right so instead of having, yes, yes. Uh, can i share my thoughts yes. about the stress definitely sorry i'm a bit unconventional about this thing right so for example if you are stressed then you go to for hiking for two hours you feel happy then you went back home you feel stressed back on oh, the next monday you feel stressed back so this all the activities that we mentioned earlier 
it's a quick fix. So we need to find the solution. So what is solution? You need to find the way how to reduce your stress, at least for the long term. Not forever, at least for the long term. This is what I'm trying to say. So it's either you go to therapy, so you talk to your management, how you can reduce your stress, all the activities like cooking, like a planting, it's just like a quick fix. Like you take like a pill killer, but after that you're going to stress again. This is my thought. Thanks. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think uh, because in terms of uh, talking to management, yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, that is what we have learned as well. It's it should be for management if they have like two way communication then it is possible for us to talk with the management but let's say in cases where the management is reluctant to listen to employees so maybe might be quite difficult for employee to go and talk to them right so that's why we have this one is to for personal one what you can do in like i've mentioned just now right the the advice here is more um personal and when it comes to when it comes to the organization so what you can do in terms of your work is this one okay like i've mentioned re re redesigning jobs okay? maybe you accepting every work accepting every task that has been passed to you maybe that's the source of your stress right so you have to change right? you have to find a way on try to redesign what your job does and so on Okay, that one is like uh, Mel said, is a long term practice. Okay, for your long term, um, long term measures, uh, measures for your stress. Okay, and then another thing is go to therapist, uh, because of be, then uh, what is that? Okay, because of um, I think um, it can be it, it depends on okay, it can be. Others, they have, uh, each and every one, they have their own obstacles, right? Maybe let's say if it's not um, financial problem, maybe a different a different thing, right? Because someone used to say to me that actually to be able to go to therapist, to be able to go to counsellor is actually a privilege that we don't realise. Some people they don't have that privilege okay? but if yes you have privilege then go for it go for help go to seek medical expert um and then uh and then uh, what we what we, what we do uh, go to doctors okay, to get um to get proper check for yourself okay it's just that sometimes um not everybody have a same privilege like his